Hi there, my name's Ed. Today we are tasting a Lapsang Souchong. This Lapsang Souchong is not smoked. Um, it's got a real nice sweet aroma. Um, nice complex um, black tea, which generally you wouldn't think black tea is um, going to be that interesting or that, that unique or... Um, yeah, we don't have this 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 uh, perception that black tea can be compelling because obviously, black tea is what you find in tea bags, and is what is kind of the, the commodity mass production tea. Um, but black tea that's made, um, you know, <laughs> in a in a finer in a finer way in a in a higher quality way, can be very compelling, can be very interesting, and this. Black tea is, is 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 that. We've got some nice, strong aroma coming off this. Kind of a mixture of, almost a mix of of, of sweetness and savouriness. So there's kind of that sweeter multi, um, multi element. But there's also something else in there. It's kind of a toastiness. What on earth is that? Almost a little bit of tree bark on the nose, on, on the dry leaves here. A kind of woodiness, yeah, for sure. Interesting. So a bit of sweetness, a bit of savouriness. Um, anything more on the dry leaves? And a bit of fruit as well. For me, there's a bit of kind of dried fruit and kind of a I'm not sure what, what category of fruit this falls into, but kind of prunes almost. They are dried, but not dry, if that makes sense. So there's a kind of, a kind of mixture of that kind of jam, it's a mixture of jammy and dried fruit. Um, got some freshly boiled um, 90 degree water, so technically not boiling, um, just for the rinse. This is a, um, Actually, a taster pack from Mayleaf. Um, and in this lovely taster pack of Souchong liquor, we got a lovely six grams instead of five, which was uh, in an interesting little uh, bonus. Um, but there we go. That was actually diluted quite significantly um, by the, the kind of the heating water. And look, you've got quite a, an amazing kind of gold, amber. It's almost like a almost like a gemstone colour in there, which is lovely. A bit more of that woodiness actually on, on the nose for me here. And I guess that's a, that's a result of the oxidation, as black tea is a highly oxidised tea. A kind of woodiness, less of that malty sweetness. Maybe just a touch of kind of baked honey. Have we got any fruit in there? So I'm just going to get, get rid of my steamy glasses. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a bit of almost like apricot jam or something, something along those lines. There's, there's definitely a kind of, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's kind of a dry jammy fruit in there. Um, It's nothing to do with apple, nothing to do with citrus. Kind of, yeah, a little bit of stone fruit, I think, yeah. So prune, the prune and apricot, there's, there's kind of a bit of stone fruit. Um, but I'd say that's kind of more on the back burner. Um, and there's definitely the maltiness, um, which we'll, we'll, we will be getting probably more on the, um, on the uh, liquor itself. And a bit of toastiness. I might have to go back on those wet leaves actually to kind of unravel it slightly further. There we are. Trying to get tea everywhere. There we go. And this tea has very, very small, small leaves. So in that in that kind of uh, five or six grams, you're getting loads and loads of leaves. I mean this is just an unbelievable 
little whoomph pile of uh, leaves. It kind of looks like compost actually, and that dark colour. Um, there we are. Just going to give one more, uh, one more try of these wet leaves. It's actually getting more toasty now, bizarrely. After it's getting, it's wake, it's waking up. It's getting a bit more, a bit more moisture in the leaves. A kind of roasty, toasty, kind of almost like a bit, a bit of like granola. Yeah, kind of a honey, like a, a honey nut granola almost. Interesting, interesting. A far cry from a tea bag, I have to say. Quite a bracing liquor, not astringent um, as of yet. Kind of medium, I'd say. But that the density of leaves you get in there are certainly going to provide a bit of texture, a texture in the liquor. I mean, not a lot of aromatics coming through in the liquor, particularly. Um, you're getting a nice, rich liquor. And it's definitely, there's probably the most malt is in the liquor, I would say. And obviously the aroma might, might be sweet, it might, it might be evoking sweet things, but this is obviously not a sweet liquor. Um, so we're getting less of, less of the honey in the liquor, I would say, as well. Or less of the kind of sweetness that I was getting in the aroma. Yeah, because you smell these leaves and they are so sweet. Just so, and there's almost like a, almost like a saltiness or something, or kind of like a, there's something that's almost in contrast to the sweetness on the aroma. That's really interesting. It's not, it's kind of, it's not a sourness. There's just something, like, there's like a minerality actually. You can kind of almost smell a bit of stone in there, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So there's the sweetness, and there's also that kind of minerality, that stone minerality. Very interesting. Right, I want to get into the second infusion, actually. I think this tea probably has a little bit more to give. So we are certainly going to get into the second infusion. And black tea is an interesting one. People underrate it, certainly. And I guess it's the tea of stereotypes in a way. Like you think of, you've got Earl Grey, um, which you think is going to be, you know, uh, obviously it's a blended tea with bergamot. Um, and you kind of think, oh, that's a, that's a certain way. And then you've got Lapsang Souchon, which you think, oh, that's going to be a smoked tea. That's a certain thing. Um, and then you've got tea bags and you think, oh, this is, you know, low quality black tea, black, you know, it's kind of all, they all kind of have these different tribes um, and they're all stereotyped and they're kind of all reduced into that stereotype of kind of nothingness really, you know, like a, a Lapsang Souchong is a Lapsang Souchong, you know, there's probably, hun you know, there's hundreds of different types and people don't really buy into, I mean, particularly don't really buy into that sort of thing. So, um I think black tea definitely falls by the wayside in a way, in terms of people's perceptions of it. But absolutely beautiful liquor. So it's getting almost more of that, that dryness um, that you get from a kind of typical brew, uh, a builder's brew. And that, um, 
Yeah, for me, it's this liquor is is is, is more interesting in terms of its bracing, bracingness, its texture. There's loads of aroma on the dry and wet leaves. Less of it in the liquor for me um, this time. I'm just going to see if I can get any more kind of like nuttiness or any more kind of more specifically um, roasty toasty notes. And it's not, it's interesting. Black tea tends to be more astringent. People associate it with astringency and that's why uh, milk is added to black tea typically to balance out the astringency. Um, and black tea gets astringent a lot of times because it's brewed at 100 degrees, which is probably too hot for um, a black tea because um, you're extracting so much of the, um, of the chemicals in, the, in those tea leaves um, so quickly. So you're getting lots of the flavor um, but also lots of the tannins as well. So um, that's another reputation that black tea has is, is, is astringent. And this tea, brewed at 90 degrees, is not astringent at all. It does have a bracingness. It does have a slight dryingness. But for me, I wouldn't say it's astringent at this point. Um, it definitely will get astringent in later infusions. But this is a black tea that you can appreciate on its own um, and enjoy on its own you don't have to um, add anything or have it with anything it, it, it does stand on its own and it's certainly got an interesting aroma however for me the liquor doesn't have the aromatic complexity that the leaves do which is interesting I'm not sure why that's happened in this case, um, but that is quite common. Um, it's common with a lot of things, um, I find. Is that it's kind of easier almost to get aroma in the in in leaves than it is in a liquor, um, and that's true of other things. For example, wine as well. You might get a real punchy aroma on the nose, um, but less on the palate. And it's, it's always disappointing and it's always something that you've got to <laughs> kind of be wary of because you might smell something and you think, oh, that smells amazing. Um, and then it falls flat on the palate. But it's interesting, the, the compounds are in there. You know? So the compounds are in there. Why don't the compounds come on a palate as well? Interesting. Considering your palate is mostly just your sense of smell as well. Interesting. So it's it's got the maltiness. It's got it's kind of got that classic black tea profile, but a black tea pro profile that you can appreciate. Um, however, for me, the liquor is falling a little bit flat, and um, I'd like to see a bit more of that aromatic complexity in the liquor. Anyway, that's everything from me today. I'm going to keep drinking this tea despite what I've just said. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.